evening. <clears throat> Good evening. Welcome back to Roslyn Court. My name's Morag Butler. And this evening, we have Faye Heald with us. Right. We also have Capella. We're going to sing a song in a minute. Great. And um, we have the usual raffle, which is um, that whoever uh, wins the first prize in the raffle will get uh, a CD, and whoever wins second prize will get a Who Gives a Crap toilet roll. <laughs> yes, okay. So, all the people in here, you're all entered into the raffle. People at home, if you donate during the course of this program, you will also be entered into the raffle. Or if you take part in the live chat, I'll put your name, I'll pop your name in. Okay? Right, so um, I'm going to sing you a song uh, because it's April. I'm going to sing you a song about April, which is, seems appropriate. Yes, yes. It's the uh, first time I've sung here in April, otherwise I would have done it before. I don't know what part of the country that comes from where the birds actually sing known songs. They were singing <laughs> Lovely Nancy, which would be a thing to behold as the sun was rising, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, now, can I welcome please to the stage slightly taller, Capella! Hooray! <laughs> Hello. 
thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Oh, this is a real treat for me. I don't usually get somebody raise the microphone for me. So. <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to um, we're going to carry on with uh, more eggs April theme, aren't we? We are indeed. This is a song by the totally amazing Chumbawamba, which we heard drifting over a field at a folk festival once back in 2007, and the subject of the song becomes well, it be becomes no less relevant as time goes on. Sadly. April morning, summer comes soon, clouds follow after. Morning sun is hidden by noon, day shrouded over. Tears to face the morning news, we watch our future burn and wonder if we'll ever learn. That words can save us War in broken promised land Fame, fear and gunfire Cowboy culture, blood on its hands Flag, fuel and empire Bit parts for shooting stars Above the dying trees no one looking up to see how words can save us. Number one, favorite son, one more outsider. Army drops its cluster bombs, boy sees his future. What are you listening now? This fool just had his day Who'll be brave enough to say That words can save us What are you listening now? This fool just had his day Who'll be brave enough to say That words can save us Thank you. That's lovely. We'll have another song from them in the second half. A swap. We'll get the second half. Sorry, you at home, you have to make your own entertainment. Now, I would like to please introduce onto the stage Faye Heald, who is Professor of Music at Sheffield University, ooh, yeah. And not only that, though, she also runs the Access Folk Initiative, which is aimed at widening access to folk venues like this and folk clubs and increasing the, the people who visit clubs and venues. And thank you for that, please. Welcome <laughs> to the stage, Faye Heald, yay! Are we well? Yes. Tip top. Are we well? Are you well out there? So many cameras, it's very exciting. How many people are out there? Um, quite a lot. Wow, that's cool. I just thought I could name you individually if you, you know, it's just no, nice to know. I can't, I won't. All right. Well, hello to you as well, and hello to your lovely faces. I'm sure you all look beautiful too. Right. Lady Erskine sits into her bower I saw in a silken seam A bonny shirt for child Oh, let us he goes out and then His face was fair, long was his hair She's called him to come near Oh, you must cook, old Lord Ronald, for all his land and gear. Oh, lady, hold your tongue for shame. Such things can never be done. 
For I'll not cook old Lord Ronald and me his sister's son. She's taken out the smallest knife which lay down by her side. She's pricked herself below her breast which made her body bleed. Lord Ronald's come into her bower where she did make her moan. Oh, what is all this bloody set that shines on your breast bone? Oh, child, Owlet, your sister's son, he's new gone from me bower. Had I not been a good woman, I'd have been child Owlet's whore. So he has taken child Owlet, thrown him in prison strong. And all his men a council held to judge child Owlet's wrong. Oh, some they said that he should hang. Some said that he should burn. Some said that they'd have child Owlet between wild horses torn. There's horses in my stable stand. Can run right easily, and you will to my stable go and take out four for me. They tied a horse unto each foot and one unto each hand. They sent them out o'er Elkin Moor as fast as they could ride. There was no grass on Elkin Moor. No broom, no bonny wind, but it's dripping with child owlet's blood and pieces of his skin. There is no stone on Elkin Moor, no broom, no bonny rush, but it's dripping with child owlet's blood and pieces of his flesh. Thank you very much. We'll get the utter misery out of the way first. I love that song. It's the most gruesome thing I can imagine. Can you imagine being torn apart by horses? I also like that the woman in it is a she's a rake cow. Like uh, she's coming on to a nephew and then gets him murdered. And I don't know. What I love as well about it is there's no moral. It's just that happened. And so I don't know. Don't I take from that what you will? Identify with who you like. Um, so, are we... Oh, you're very smiley. That's nice. Are you folk friendly? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, very good. Well done. Are you folk knowledgeable? Mm, on a scale of one to ten, what's your folk knowledge? We've got a two, very unconfident. We've a four. Did I hear a six? Seven. Very okay. We've got a mixed bag, mixed bag. Okay. So that was a child ballad. That's a term that's banded around a lot for the ballads. Child ballad, as I was growing up, it's just a thing, and I knew it was a thing, and it feels like a massive thing. But all it means is there was a fancy man called uh, Sir Francis James Child who liked songs and collected them. He was an American academic, and he, uh, he didn't go out to singers. He got them all from text sources, so broadsides or letters or newspapers and things, and gathered them all together. And uh, because each of the songs, as they travel around, you get loads of different versions of them. So he would gather together all the versions, which could be really different songs, different tunes, different words, different languages. You know, they're very broad Scots down to the southern English, but the same song, and he'd give them a number to kind of pin them together. So he was the first one to do that. Um, so that's what a child ballad is. That's all that means. Um, so if you're at the low end of folk knowledge, you've learned something. If you're at high end and you know all that, you'll find this interesting. Um, so that is one of the rare ones. There's only one version of it in child. Mm, interesting. There we go. Something for everyone. Um, cool. I'll do another miserable one now. This is miserable in a different way. It's less gruesome, but it's heartbreaking. It's about a dead goose. Yeah! <laughs> I like this one. I overthink songs quite a lot, uh, as Maura kindly mentioned my academic credentials. Um, it's just because I overthink things. And, uh, and this one, it's an, it's an American playground game. Um, I think it's still quite common. Are there any Americans in? 
on a scale of one to ten, how American are you? There's going to be someone, isn't there, online that's in America? Okay, so if you're in America online, type in the chat or whatever you do, um, and do they have chat function? Yes. Excellent. Oh, cool. Um, if you sang this at school, it'd be really cool. Um, so, you know, kids, they sing things and you don't really think about the words. It's just for the game that they're doing. So I don't know if they really saw the significance, but for me, it's very important. So it's about a woman called Aunt Nancy who's delighted that the goose is dead because she gets to use the feathers to stuff her mattress or feather bed that she's been making. And as a patchworker myself, I can understand the joy of finishing a craft project. Um, but then it moves rather darkly onto what the goose's family might be thinking of the death. So, yeah, there's a lot in it, a lot in it. Okay, tragic. Um, so yeah, they collected that in America. That, so Sharp, Cecil Sharp collected that. Um. He was, he was a bit after child, so he was more sort of early 1900s, whereas 
childless late 1800s. And, um, and he, he collected all the folk songs in England with his faithful assistant, Maud Carp, please. They would travel around and, uh, yeah, he felt he'd done all that. So then he went off to the Appalachian Mountains to see what settlers had taken over there and brought back amazing, amazing collections of American versions of British songs. Um, yeah, so that's one of his. Um, the next one I'll do was by Rafe Vaughan Williams, another avid collector at the same sort of time as Sharp. Um, so Sharp's motivations was because he wanted uh, folk music to be given back to the people. You know, he was seen as this dying out thing. And so he was very much an educationalist. He printed songbooks and versions for children and sort of simple piano accompaniments so you could play it at home and things like that. So he was very much about getting it back to the people. Uh, Vaughan Williams, on the other hand, he was a high-level classical art composer, so he just wanted the melodies to work into his music, or, you know, not just, I don't know what all his motivations were, but that's mainly what he did. Um, and so he was really interested in the tunes, and the songs that he collected, um, the tunes are just amazing. You know, somebody like that, they're going to have an ear for an amazing tune, aren't they? So so it was the, what was it? It was either the centenary or the bicentenary of his birth or death. Not quite sure which one, but uh, something significant happened to him at some point. Well, both things happened, I guess. Um, and uh, there was a big fancy concert at Cecil Sharp House in London, and uh, lots of different artists were given songs to do, and this one was given to me. So I learned it, and I love it. I love the tune, and I sang it. It's uh, So the words, it's quite a common um, setting, I suppose, for folk songs. So the young man has been sent off to war, and the woman being left at home wants to go with him, and... Uh, in lots of different versions, she cross-dresses and goes as a man to war with her fella. Um, this one, it doesn't really it doesn't really do the narrative. It's just one little conversation between them, but uh, that's her intention anyway. That's what she wants to do. Um, and so I sort of sang it, but thought nothing very much of it. And then it, I did it on my first album, and then I haven't sung it for years because, you know, you get too many songs. And then I brought it back because Sam Sweeney plays fiddle. I normally play with Sam, and he was like, oh, that's a great melody. Let's do that. Um, and when I got it back into my repertoire, I was singing it, and I realised there's a, an interesting twist to it that I hadn't noticed before, which gave me sort of shivers. It's quite funny when you know a song, and then you realise, oh, I didn't know that. Like, your relationship with it changes as you sing it sometimes, or you hear another story about it, or whatever, um, and it can mean totally different things. So, prizes. Feels like we like a little game here. I don't know, you've got your toilet roll raffle prize. I'll, I'll, I'll give a free postcard to anyone that can Ooh. spot... Now you're excited, aren't you? Aren't you? Do you know what? This is only my second raffle gig of the tour. I didn't win the last one. Um, a young, I mean, this is a bit of an aside. You might not be interested, but uh, my number came up, but it was the wrong colour. And the person who won it, she was like an eight-year-old girl. And we were getting on quite well before that moment, and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she won a, a, it was a penny with like hallucinogenic dogs on it. I didn't know I needed it until she had it. <laughs> right, the banks of the Nile. Get your listening ears on. Not that you weren't listening. Hark, I hear the drums are beating. And love I must away I hear the bugles calling me I can no longer stay We are bound down to Portsmouth town It's many's a weary mile To join the British army on the bank of the Nile William, dearest William Don't leave me here to mourn You'll make me curse And rue the day That ever I was born I will cut off me curly locks And come along with you I'll dress myself in velveteen and go to Egypt too. Nancy, lovely Nancy, with me you cannot go. Our colonel's given orders, no women are to go. We must forsake our own sweetheart. All on our knee 
devile and fight for king and country on the banks of the Nile. Well, cursed be the wars, me love, and how they first began, for they have robbed old Ireland of many's a brave young man. They've taken our own sweethearts all from a native isle, and their bodies lie a mouldering on the banks of the Nile. Okay, prize is time, prize is time. Anybody spot anything interesting? Are you going to be too shy? Do we need to get into small working groups? Yes. Yeah. You are the first person to have got it all tour. All tour. Round of applause. Woo! Yeah, it's just that one word, island, in it. So I pictured it as this British couple. He's off to fight, all proud and happy to have signed up for the army. But, uh, yeah, of course, the British were in Ireland. And uh, obviously he signed up voluntarily, but the option was famine and starvation or join the British army. It's not a super choice, is it? Um, so all those other references to fight for king and country and, you know, it just makes me tingle a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I like that. And then the really interesting thing about it is that that was collected by Ray Vaughan Williams to be quintessentially English, to, to do this English repertoire. So I, the more I dig into the stuff, it's so... English folk tradition is so constructed um, and little things like that can just make me smile. Anyway, I like that. So the next one is a sort of sister song to that. This one's a new song and it was written by Angeline Morrison. I think you've probably had her here, haven't you, Morag? Oh, wicked. Okay, so if you didn't see her last time, come and see her um, because she's, she's phenomenal. So she's a traditional English singer. She recorded folk albums, um, but she's black British. And she did a project at Cecil Sharp House to dig into the repertoires to find songs that looked at her history and, and where she fits in and representations of black people in the repertoire. Um, and she found a few things, not very many. And the ones that she did find were very caricature-y. They were either you know, negative figures or just comical figures and not something that she really wanted to connect with. So she took a project on, which I think is phenomenal. She, um, she's written a whole album of new songs, but about historical periods significant to the black British history. Um, so some real individual people or some contexts and things. So it's this whole album that plugs loads of gaps that I didn't know about, including this song. So this is, um, it's Cruel Mother Country from her album. And, uh, 1775, 1776, the British Army is in America <laughs> fighting for the War of Independence and recruiting people. And one of the target groups that they wanted to recruit from was the enslaved American, black American people. Um, yeah. And at the time, it was King George on the throne. And his wife, Charlotte, is reputed to have been of African origin and to have some... African genetics in it. Now that's still being argued and debated as far as I know by his historians and things like that but what Angeline found evidence for is that the recruiting soldiers were using the reputation of her blackness to recruit black people to the army so um, so they were saying join us and we will take you back to England and you'll be you know looked after by a black queen um, which it, that, that stuff had never occurred to me, so I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. Are you a singing crowd here? Yes. Excellent. And I heard harmony singing earlier, so you might even win the Tour Harmony Cup as well. So I've done this. Uh, more I've mentioned the access folk thing that I'm doing. So I've put the words up. Now, it's controversial for folkies. Because you're supposed to internalise songs, aren't you, and just do it, just know it. But, of course, people don't just know it. You can't see a blubbing thing, can you? Move around if you want to, or just look at someone else's mouth if you need to guess. 
if you're if you're offended by the use of words, if you're quite a pure folk purist, then you can just look at me. That's fine. And if you don't want to sing at all, you can just move your mouth, and no voice has to come out. That's all right as well. You don't have to sing. But um, yeah, I thought I might make it easier for people. It's not a bother to carry around at all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country, how sweetly your siren song sounds o'er the sea. If it weren't for your arms, an orphan I'd be. Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country, Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country, how sweetly your siren song sounds o'er the sea. If it weren't for your arms, an orphan I'd be. Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country. England is ruled by an African queen, dark and esteemed on the throne. Or so we were told by the press ganging team who promised us freedom and home. Finally, we'd return to the mother's bosom. They promised us freedom, they promised us land, magnificent treasures unknown. But worth so much more than these treasures in hand was the promise we'd see our true home. And then lovingly be embraced at the mother's bosom. Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country, how sweetly your siren song sounds o'er the sea. If it weren't for your arms, an orphan I'd be. Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country, if England's dark queen is our own mother dear, how gladly we'll serve in her name. We'll fight in her cruel wars with bloodshed and fear, as valiant bearers of pain. For soon shall we be returned to a happy kingdom. I haven't a penny, I haven't a leg, I've neither my freedom nor land. Through London's dark city I wander and beg as I cling to my cruel mother's hand. All her promises were worth less than a grain of sand. Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country, how sweetly your siren song sounds o'er the sea. If it weren't for your arms, an orphan I'd be. Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country. Oh, mother, my mother, Cruel mother country, how sweetly your siren song sounds o'er the sea. If it weren't for your arms, an orphan I'd be. Oh, mother, my mother, cruel mother country, all your promises were worth less than a grain of Oh, she's great as Angeline Morrison, isn't she? Okay, um, Alan Cole says, 55 years attending folk clubs. Do you reckon that's enough information? Well, to answer what? If it's a question about plumbing, probably well. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Also, I'd just like to say hello to Jasmine and Peter and Stephen, who are watching from hospital. Um, I'd like to ask, speak to the people at home and say, if you are in a position, please, to um, donate anything uh, to this, to the putting on of this concert, that would be absolutely super. And as a bit of a, an example of something you might want to, to donate, we, I did a, bit, a little bit of research, and um, coming from Sheffield, um, there's the steel in Sheffield, and they make, they make cutlery there. So if you would like to donate the equivalent of half a teaspoon which is um, which has the Sheffield University uh, logo stamped on it, which would be around about a fiver. That would be wonderful, although anything would be really, really lovely. Um, but uh, that was as good as we got, I'm afraid. Oh, I'll take a teaspoon. I mean, just send what, the a whole teaspoon, thing? that'd be all right, yeah? Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice, yeah. Don't need the logo, don't need yeah, the logo. Was, yeah, okay, no, it's half a teaspoon for, uh, for, for a fiver. Um, if people at home want to get your CDs, which Kerry Pike does from Cambridgeshire, Thank you, Kerry. Um, where can she get it from? Fayhill.com. I believe my name, oh, you probably can't see it behind the thing anymore. It's like Hayfield, but swap the initials round and then put dot .com at the end. <laughs> Simples. I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, at home, you don't get the option of this because you just have a one flat fee. Um, well, I suppose for you, you have my Yorkshire offer. Buy one, get one. <laughs> Whereas for you lucky people, you get to buy one, get one, buy two. So it's £12 each. Um, I think it's 13 online, but that covers postage. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so you can buy one for twelve pounds, or two for twenty, three for thirty, four for forty, that kind of thing. So that's good, isn't it? Um, my friend Gillian, who I used to gig with um, with the Witches of Elswick, she had a brilliant system. She um, she was very clever. She won the Weakest Link once. I know, I know. Um, and she worked out that CDs twelve pounds. There's usually about twelve tracks, pound a track, bargain. Play it twice, fifty p a track. Three times, twenty five p. If you play that CD often enough, it will start earning you money. <laughs> I sell a lot of CDs in Yorkshire with that. Now, from a banjo tune in. Right. I'll do... Uh, this is a silly song after... Yeah, the last one felt quite um, significant, and this one is a bit more frivolous. However, it was banned by the BBC for its risque nature. Um, <laughs> um, I love it. Um, it it's, it's a musical song, and there's lots of verses, but the, what, the important bit's just in the first two verses, so that's all I do. Um, it's about a drunk man um, who goes for a walk and uh, sits in a gutter, and a pig comes down for a little sit next to him. And they have a chat, that's nice. And then a woman, a bit of a Karen figure, I believe you call her these days. A bit of an interfery, busy bozzy nose. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how Karen are you? <laughs> um, and she's not very impressed. And she says, oh, you can tell the quality of a person by the company they keep, can't you? And then the pig gets up and just walks off. <laughs> I kind of spoiled the story now, but I love it, I love it.
Thank you very much. Right, I'll do a, a silly little... Well, it's not that silly. I, I like this one. I like all songs for different reasons. You know, some of them have got a beautiful tune, some of them are a good vehicle for a chorus, some of them have got an amazing plot or they're really gruesome. This one, I just like the shape of the words in my mouth. Um, it's just a lovely kind of turns of phrase in this one. Um, the story... I got a bit in trouble with um, with Peter Webb, a uh, folk singer from London, um, because it's a... Uh, it's one of the unmarried pregnant women songs. There's loads of them. Um, unmarried pregnant women and songs, I guess. But um, so, yeah, so she gets caught pregnant by a high and mighty person. and uh, But she's having none of it and chases after him and ends up marrying him. And I was a bit like, well, I'm not sure I'd want to be married to somebody who just treated me like that because he wasn't very nice. Um, but, yeah, so I, that was my sort of post-feminist uh, introduction when I was a, a young child and uh, Peter Webb really sat me down and was explaining the state of that, you know, history and what it was like for women and that he had no choice and that's what she'd won, you know, she'd done really well for herself. So I'm still on the fence. I still don't know, you know. So uh, again, my relationship with the song is just morphing and you can take your own position wherever you want with this. So see whose side you're on or what you, what you wish for her. It's called The Shepherd's Daughter. I got it from uh, Arthur Nevitt, who a um, brilliant folk singer from Lincolnshire. It's of a shepherd's daughter tending sheep on yonder hill. A roving blade come a-riding by and swore he'd have his will. If you should have your will of me, pray tell to me your name. So when my baby it is born, I might call him the same. Oh, some they call me Jack, he said, and some they call me John. But when I'm in the king's own court, me name is Sweet William. He mounted on his milk-white steed and away from her did ride. She's lifted up her petticoats and run right by his side. She ran till she came to the riverside. She fell on her belly and swam. She swam till she came to the other side, took to her heels and ran. She ran till she came to the king's own court and boldly pulled the ring. And none was so ready but the king himself to let this fair maid in. What brings you here, me pretty fair miss? What brings you here, says he? It's of a night in your own court this day has robbed me. What has he robbed you of, fair maid? Has he stolen all your fee? No, he's robbed me of me maiden head that me mother has given to me. Well, if he be a married man, then it's hang it he will be. But if he be a single man, and his body I'll give to thee And he called down his merry men All by one, by two, by three Sweet William, he came last of all When first he used to be And he pulled out a handful of gold He put it all in a glove Take this, take this, me pretty fair miss Go seek for another true love Oh, I'll not have any of your gold Nor any of your fee But I will take your sweet body That the king has granted me He's mounted on a milk white steed and she upon another. They rode along the king's highway like sister and like brother. They rode till he came to the first fair town he bought her a gay gold ring and when they got to the next fair town he gave her a gay wedding. Well I wish I were drinking a bath of water instead of drinking wine. Before an old shepherd's daughter would have been a bride of mine. I wish I were drinking white wine instead of drinking red before an old shepherd's daughter would bring me to me wedding bed. Thank you very much. I'll do one more and then it's the interval and I've heard this question time which is very exciting. I've not been allowed to look at any of the early questions. Oh, two more. I'll do two more. What will I do? I'll sing The Bloody Gardener. That's my favourite song. 
So this song, I got it from Maggie Boyle. Um, is that going to everything fall over? Stay. Um, and then we'll finish with a sing along a one, will we? Um, so this one, again, it's, it's a bit gruesome, as the title suggests, The Bloody Gardener. I don't think he's just like a really bad gardener. <laughs> Bloody gardeners here. Um, it's, uh, I, le I seem to be drawn to the evil women. I don't know why. I, I don't know. It's funny because you sort of take the characters of songs. So some are hard done to, and I feel for them. But like the first one with the evil witchy mother, this one's got an evil witchy mother in it as well. Um, no, it was an auntie, the first one, wasn't it? She's, um, so this is a boy meets girl, falls in love, um, but the mother disapproves. So rather than just sort of having a word or sucking it up, like, you know, we do these days, um, she has a murdered. I mean, it's an option. It's an option. And then he's, uh, I think that's what I like about it, because he's not very happy at the end. I guess he wouldn't be. But yeah, so he's a bit vitriolic and like just spitting at her kind of, in my mind anyway. So I love this. It's a lovely tune. <coughs> Bloody Gardener. Um, it's totally gone from my head. That's really annoying. Ah. <sighs> Does anybody know it? <laughs> oh, God, this is really annoying. It's a shame we can't just hit pause in a live gig, isn't it? Um, maybe I'll do this one, and then we'll come back to that. Let's do that, and then I don't have to do the intro all over again. So this one is a um, Rudyard Kipling poem. Put to words, no, he did the words. Put to music by Peter Bellamy, um, brilliant folk singer from Norfolk, um, lived in Keithley for a long time, and he did loads with Kipling's poems. So Kipling was a brilliant, brilliant poet. Some of it hasn't really lasted the test of time, and some of his language is very dodgy, but, um, but some of it's just brilliant, and, and the phrasing of it fits to music really nicely. This one's just about trees and the woods, and he evokes this kind of really sort of timeless sense of English forestry to me and and i just love it and and it's a lovely chorus as well so if you'll join in that would be gorgeous um let's start with the chorus oh goodness and thong it says on a midsummer's morn surely we'll sing of no little thing in oak and oh of all the trees that grow so fair old england to adorn Greater are none beneath the sun than oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, all in the midsummer's morn. Surely we'll sing of no little thing in oak and ash and thorn. Oak of the clay, live many a day, or ever in has begun. Ash of the loam's a lady at home when Brooke was an outlaw man. And thorn of the down saw new Troy town from which was London born. Witness here by the ancient try of oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, all in a midsummer's morn. Surely we'll sing of no little thing in oak and ash and thorn. You that is old in church are mouldy, breedeth the mighty bow. Alder for shoes do wise men choose, and beech for cups also. But when you have killed your bow, you've spilled your shoes, are clean out worn. Back you must speed for all that you need to oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, all in the midsummer's morn. Surely we'll sing of no little thing in oak and ash and thorn. Elm, she hates mankind and waits till every gust be laid to drop a limb on the herd of him which anyway trusts his shade. But whether a lad be sober or sad or mellow with ale from the horn, he'll take us no wrong as he lieth along neath oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, all in the midsummer's morn. Surely we'll sing of no little thing in oak and ash 
passion thorn. Oh, do not tell the priest our plight, he would call it a sin. For we've been out in the woods all night, a conjuring summerin, and we bring ye news by word of mouth, good news for cattle and corn. Now as the sun come up from the south by oak and ash and thorn, sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, all in the midsummer's morn. Surely we'll sing of no little thing in oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, all in the midsummer's morn. Surely we'll sing of no little thing in oak and ash and thorn. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. She's brought me the words. Will I take two? I will. So I just keep them. Oh, am I in the raffle? Do you want your own CD? That's really I want the toilet roll, is it? <laughs> Leanne Taylor. Online. Well done, Leanne. Are you jumping around going, yay? Mm. I don't know how to pronounce it. Bob Veerwood? Veerwood. Bob? Kenwood. Oh, Kenwood. I thought it was German. There we go. Oh. Moving swiftly on. Yes. All right. Oh, I could do that one, or I could do. I'll do the special one instead. Um, so I, um, I, <laughs> I nicked this off EastEnders, but it's brilliant. Um, I can sing. I know because I'm a professor of music. I can sing. If you threw me any name, I can sing you a song with that name in it. That's how good I am. Even forgetting the words of that one. So do you want? Do you want to give me a name? Anyone chuck me a name? Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> it's good into that. I like it. I love it. But it's significant because I believe we have a Joe Thistlewood here tonight, do we? 90 years young today is Joe. <laughs> Woo! Can we all just give her a little happy birthday? Happy birthday to Jo. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jo. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Yeah. Brilliant. Morag's run away now. Maybe she wasn't expecting it to be a slightly longer song. <laughs> we could sing it again. <laughs> Lovely. I don't know what to do. Has she come back through that door? <laughs> She's just cheeking me. Right. Oh, the toilet roll. Very good. Oh, it's a fancy one, isn't it? What happens now, then? You sing a song, and then we finish. Oh, we just sang Happy Birthday. All right. Well, I thought it would be, because it is a song, but I don't have to be. You showed me the words a second ago, and now I've lost them again. <laughs> Come on, Mara. Sorry, people at home, make you cook yourself a quick cup of tea. <laughs> just tell me the first line. Go on, now. First line is, uh, it's of a girl, so fair. <laughs> It's of a pretty maid and a shepherd's daughter dear. She was courted by her own dear heart's delight. But his mother laid a snare and false letters did prepare. Saying, meet me in the garden, dear, tonight. So this young girl arose and into the garden goes, expecting there to meet her heart's delight. Though she searched the garden around, 
no true love could be found till at length the bloody gardener came in sight he says me pretty maid and what brings you here this day have you come to rob me of me flowers so gay she says no thief i am i'm in search of some young man who has promised he would meet me here this day but he took out his knife and cut a tender thread of life He's laid a virtuous body to bleed on the ground <laughs> And with flowers fine and gay This young girl he did overlay In a way her body never should be found Now this young man arose And into the garden goes a milk-white dove came fluttering where he lay And with fluttering wings so sweet All around this young man's feet But when he rose, the dove she flew away The dove she flew away And into a myrtle tree The young man followed after fall of pain and from the tree so high down to her grave did fall fresh blood from off her breast like crimson rain the man in anger rose and back to his home he goes saying curse it be my mother here this day she has robbed me of my joy my jewel and my toy and i rue the life she ever gave to me thank you <laughs> hey heels everybody <laughs> God, that was complicated, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't want to answer questions on that one, Faye. <laughs> yeah. um, can I please thank Faye? For the people at home, I'm going to thank Faye Heald and Capella, Tony and Leslie. Thank you. <laughs> and, and the team, Andrew, Roger, John, Phil, Una at the bar in her penny. Yay! <laughs> And um, Lizzie at home in, Gal in Gala Shields posting for all she's worth. And, <laughs> and Jody doing the publicity. It's, it's great. It's, there's a really, really good team here behind all of this. Make it look really easy, but it's not. Um, we are going to have a bit of a break. Um, can I just encourage you, please, to uh, come back next week for Jerry Colvin, who's celebrating St. George and Shakespeare. It's going to be weird. <laughs> You know Jerry Colvin. It's, it won't be straightforward at all. It'll be lovely. Um, and then on the Saturday, we've got another Margate songbook here. It, um, it was supposed to be the last one, but it's not going to be. And then on May the 2nd, we've got Jennifer Reed, her off the telly, you know, from The Gallows Tree. Did you watch The Gallows Tree? Yeah, yeah, she's her, her yeah, that's, that's giving it, um, giving it Laldi on the telly. And then on May the 9th, we've got Janice Burns and jo John Duran who are just lovely. They're just lovely from Scotland. Uh, lovely. So if you could, um, you know, watch us next week, you can watch us having fun next week. It's going to be a bit daft. And, um, yeah, thank you very much. This is uh, Maura Butler. Um, yay. <laughs> 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 this is Rosalind Court. Thank you very much. See you next week. Faye Heald. Yay. Yay.